Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Advanced Google Search. My name is Anna Sylvia Torres, and I'm a librarian with LA County Library, and I'll be your host for today's event. With that being said, I will introduce our presenter for today's program. He's our Community Engagement Coordinator here at LA County Library, and he's a great presenter, so I know that you're all in for a great treat in learning advanced Google search techniques today. And I'm going to now welcome Oleg Kagan. Anna Sylvia, thank you for that introduction. I really appreciate it. And good morning to everybody. Welcome to Advanced Google Search. Search is, of course, the backbone of what we do at the library. We help people do research and teach you how to search. And so this used to be something that was certainly the purview of experts. And then the World Wide Web with information retrieval systems like search engines has made it available to everyone. Now that said, most people have a rudimentary knowledge of how to do Google searches. We do them every day. And yet we know that they could be a little bit better. And so part of my mission today is to help you improve your search techniques by introducing you to some advanced features that Google offers. So advanced search, it allows users to scour the web using Google, Bing, Yahoo, or another search engine with more precision. And I'll tell you, besides Google, Bing, and Yahoo, there are a number of other search engines out there. And now I mentioned this term before, information retrieval systems. Now, a search engine is a type of information retrieval system. And there are search engines that are attached to the World Wide Web. And there are also search engines, as you know, attached to other more specific uh, databases, such as our library catalog. And so some of the advanced search techniques that you learn today, you can even apply to the library catalog. So what's an example of an advanced search? So say you want to find an article about a specific breed of dog in the United States. You could use advanced search to narrow down to that specific breed of dog, to whether you want an old, uh, old or a youngest, or whether you want to learn about a puppy, or you learn about an older dog, and various other aspects of that breed and whatever it is that you're interested in. So why use advanced search? Of course, we want our searches to be of higher quality. And what that means is we want our results to be relevant. Google has become very good at taking what little information we offer and serving us really relevant results. So usually most people don't click past the first page, which is usually 10 Google search results. And that's great. But when we have research that requires a little bit more or search that's slightly more complicated, advanced search comes into play and gives us more relevant search experiences. So what we have here are two different types of searches and we'll, they include Boolean values, or and not, or Boolean logic operators. And we'll learn a little bit more about those later. So what we have here is a search for dog or canine or puppy. And what that means is that your search will either take pages that only have the word dog, only have the word canine, or only have the word puppy, or have all of them together in various combinations. So this is a basic keyword search. Now, what most people don't know is you can also omit search terms from your search bar. And the way you do that is you write dog, not puppy. And that search will give you results that include the keywords dog, but omit the word puppy. And that's helpful if you're not looking for advice about puppies. With Google, you don't usually put the word not, you put a minus, and we'll learn more, a little bit more about that coming up. Now, advanced search is great, but Google now also has incorporated advanced search features or features that used to be advanced into their regular search. And what does that look like? Well, the thesaurus feature 
which has been a standby in library catalogs and other information retrieval systems, has been part of Google for a long time. So what we see here is I intentionally misspelled Portuguese water dog. And Google said, showing results for Portuguese water dog, because it, it figured you're probably looking for this. Now I can also click search instead for my misspelling and I probably won't get very good results. But the thesaurus feature usually is also referred to as the did you mean feature. And Google has that and it's helpful if you don't know exactly how to spell something or if there's multiple ways that a search might go where there are words that are spelled in a similar way. Google also has something called the knowledge panels. And so underneath the surface, Google has a knowledge graph, which takes people, places, and things and puts them all together, mediated by algorithms and AI, so that the computer can have a conceptual or contextual understanding of what people are searching for. And so that when we search for keywords like dog, the computer, in most computers, they don't know what a dog is. I mean, we understand what a dog means through experience, through learning. A computer really does, it just sees the string D-O-G and can use that string to search as a keyword. But through the knowledge graph, AI features and algorithms, Google can now understand that a dog is related to this. Usually a dog looks like this and can, can give you a better search. So one of the things that that comes out from that is that we get these knowledge panels in our Google search. So when I searched for Ivan Pavlov, I got this knowledge panel on the right hand side of my screen and it gave me some basic information about him, some images, some people that are related to him, maybe books that he's written. And that's a convenient feature in search. Now, what you should probably know is that Google sources the information in these knowledge panels from places like Wikipedia. So if the source information is incorrect, then the knowledge panel will be incorrect. And this often happens when we get to businesses or different kinds of locations where whatever the information Google pulls tends to be incorrect. So I've often had the situation where I look up a business on Google and the hours are out of date or incorrect. And so I always have to remind myself, don't trust what those hours say, check the business's website or give them a call and make sure that it's correct. The third type of basic search feature that, that was once more advanced is the personalization of search. A little bit creepy, but also very convenient. So I searched for the word pet shop in, in on Google search, I was logged in um, to my account. So Google knew a little bit about me. So instead of just returning some random result for Pet Shop, because how many, how many results are there for the word Pet Shop? There are 2 billion results. As you can see, it's very small on the screen, but you can see 2 billion results for Pet Shop. What Google did was it, it realized that through my, where I had put my home on Google Maps, where you know where I was searching from that I was probably looking for a pet shop locally. And so what it returned to me was Petco in Glendale. I live in Montrose, so Glendale is pretty close. And uh, Pets R Us, and uh, Pets R Us Pet Grooming and Supplies also in Glendale. So it tried to return results that I thought would be relevant to me. So our objectives for today are to learn the names and uses of Boolean operators, learn how to fill out advanced search forms on search engine websites. And through these things, you're gonna to end today by being able to craft searches that are of higher quality. Um, I noticed that there's a question in the, in the chat here, and it's uh, in the Q&A portion of the screen, do your clarifies, clarifiers need to be in caps? No, the Boolean operators do not need to be in caps. Uh, search engines don't care about whether uh, something is capitalized or not. They're, they're case insensitive. So they are not case sensitive. So I put them in caps just so, they're, just so the slides are easy to read so that you can pick out which ones are in, uh, which ones are in caps. Oh, we just had a, a question. So one of our folks lives right nearby to where I am, right nearby where I am. Hi, Ron. Maybe we'll run into each other on the street. 
All right, let's let's move forward. Uh, oh, we had a question. Are you going to cover image searching? Um, I won't cover it as part of the presentation, but I can cover it later. On so there's a couple of there's Google Image Search and there's also Tin Eye that allows you to search via images. All right. So you've got a few people who are interested in image search. And I will, once I finish my, my standard presentation, I will get into image search. Just put it in the Q&A and, and, and I'll cover it for sure. Okay, before I begin the Boolean operator part of the presentation, I wanna ask you, put in the chat, how confident are you in your search skills? And do you usually find the information that you need? Maybe if you want to include your biggest challenge of the search, that would also help me because I have a presentation that's in the can here, but I can adjust it however you want because this is this is our time together. So if you're here, I want to give you something that's that's useful for you. So that's somebody who said that I've never used Boolean searching. Boolean searching can be can be really, really useful, even if all you use is the minus. Um, I, I use that fairly regularly when I'm searching for things that have similar spellings or where the meanings are kind of synonyms. I love this rest. Somebody, somebody said 80% of the time, but I sometimes I think microfilm was easier. <laughs> Microfilm, well, you, when you find the, the reel that you need, then you can go through the machine. Uh, what I love, my, actually, what I love about microfilm machines is the sound that they make. They go, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I think you enjoy that. Some people have never heard of Boolean searches. Good. Some somewhat confident, not, not too confident. Some people are worried about uh, safety in the searches that they find. That's important. So a lot of people find, do find what they need. We've got a re we've got a really nice. And I said, why bother to use Bing and others if Google covers most searches? Every search engine has its own positives and negatives. So with big search engines like Bing, Yahoo, or a Google, you'll generally have similar results, though not always. Now, when you get into more in-depth uh, search engines like Wolfram Alpha, these are search engines that are slightly different and that you search differently or, or DuckDuckGo, which doesn't use cookies and doesn't, you know, doesn't lose the, your location or anything. You're going to get different searches and you might find some more interesting results. Okay, so we've actually, it's interesting. We have a real mix of people who are really pretty confident in their searches and also people who are here to learn and some people who are not confident at all. Okay, so this is going to be great because I think everyone will get a little something from the presentation and then the Q&A will be a lot more informative and insightful for people who are very confident already. All right, so let's get into some Boolean searching. Okay, we're getting some responses in the, in the Q&A also. Oh, we had a, we had a comment here. Uh, I'm not able to see the questions listed in the chat. Yes, the questions are in the chat are only directed to uh, Anna, Sylvia, and myself. So you can and you can ask your own questions, but you won't see other people's questions. Usually, I'll read out the questions though, so so you'll know what other people have asked. Okay, let's move on to topics covered. As I mentioned, Boolean logic and operators, and advanced search forms. And then, of course, we can get into image search. We can get into a whole bunch of other stuff with search. Search. There, there have there are many books written about search. So you know, I'm this presentation is going to be maybe 45 minutes, 50 minutes, but if you have a 300 page book, obviously there's a lot more to cover when it comes to advanced search. All right, Boolean logic. So if you're not familiar with what that is, it was created by a mathematician called a George Boole, um, not created for computer computers, created before the use of computers, created um, in order for in the, the field of logic, but it was taken up in computer science and has been a mainstay in both programming and search for as long as programming in search has existed. What is Boolean logic? It's characterized by the operators and, or, and not. And with these three operators, you have a very powerful way of searching and also telling computers what to do. So what do they do? And 
narrows a search. So when you are doing a search and you use and, that means that you're searching for this word and this other keyword. Typically these days, search engines will imply and, so you don't have to put it because if you type in the words like dog and cat, it'll search for both of those. And I'll show you some examples in a little bit. It'll search for both of those anyway. Or if you just type dog cat, it'll try to search for both of those or broadens the search. So what or does in search engines and Google particularly is that it gives you results for a word for if you type it like if you have three different words, it'll give you the results for just one word, just the middle word, just the third word, and also all of them together and in combinations. Whereas and tries to get the results with both words or will do individually and also together or in any combination. So it gives you a much broader search. Not amidst words, and I've talked about not already. Um, if you put a little minus sign before word, Google will exclude that word from your search results. So any web page that has that word in it will not show up in your results. So I started with examples a little bit already, but let's say you were searching for pets. Now pets is a very general keyword. Now, if you're just talking about a computer at its base, a computer doesn't know what a, what, that a pet also implies dogs, cats. It just knows the word pet, P-E-T-S, and it'll search for keyword, that keyword in web pages. Now those may also have other words, but it'll primarily search for pets. Now these days, search engines are a lot smarter than they used to be. And so Google will know that pets implies other things. So different types of pets, you'll get a ton of results with pets. If you're looking for something more specific, if you're looking for dogs and cats, you, and you don't care which one, you just want results for dogs and cats. So those are the pets you're interested in. Then you don't put pets, you put dogs, cats, and your search will be really wide. If you want dogs or cats, so both or separately. So if you want just web pages, web pages are only about dogs, web pages only about cats, or everything in between, the same search essentially as dogs and cats, then you put you put dogs or cats. Now, if you really want to learn about various pets, but you hate cats, and you don't want those to show up in your results, then you type in pets minus cats, and you won't get any of those pesky felines in your search results. Now, I've been talking about this and saying it verbally, but it might be a little bit easier to see it visually. So when you do dogs and cats, you only get the search related to the, only the pages that give you dogs and cats on the same page. Pets, of course, are, gives you everything related to pets. If you exclude cats from your search, you get all the pets except for cats. No cats. Now, disclaimer, I love cats. I love dogs. I love all pets. I think fish are a little silly, but that's just me. Let's see now, dogs or cats. So this is the, this is the interesting one. So here you see you have the search for either words, pages that just have the word dogs, just have the word cats, or both. So the broadest search is dogs or cats. All right. Moving forward, oh, I need to erase my annotations because they don't make sense on this page. So more examples of using Boolean searches in a slightly different way. So one thing we can do in search is to put quotes around words. What that does is that it it does a a why so we have an example. We, it does it searches for the words in the page, both words in the page. But if you put quotes around the page, the word, it'll only search for the instance of those keywords when both of those words are together. So if you put quotes here around wildlife preserve, the only thing that, that the search engine will search for, Google in this case, it'll search for those terms together and not wildlife and preserve separately. 
So it's convenient if you're trying to find something where the term has to be modified by the term before it. And so you put those together. Now, in the past, search engines used to have the feature where you could say how many words apart they could be. So you would put, you know, wildlife, you know, W2 or the, you know, two, maybe two words apart or a certain amount of characters apart. Um, that is no longer really a feature in the basic search engines or like the popular search engines, but that, that's, that's where this came from. But now it's just wildlife in quotes the two words in quotes and then give you the whole term. You can combine Boolean operators in any way you want. So if we go here to the bottom, we see the search zoo or aquarium or wildlife preserve. And so this will search for individually zoo, individually aquarium, individually the two words wildlife preserve together or all of, them, all of the words together or separately. It's the only thing we have to pay attention to is that wildlife preserve will always be searched for together. So you can also use parentheses and the parentheses work in a similar way to the, the way they work in math. It prioritizes certain Boolean uh, expressions. So if we're searching for adoption and pets, but not children, we can see that we'll do this first and then subtract children. And you'll get, these are all just ways to make your search a little bit more relevant. And they don't always need to be used, but when your search starts to get more complex or using words with a lot of other words that are similar to it, or, you know, if you're looking for, for, for instance, a company, uh, a clothing company called like Bulldog Clothing, and you type in Bulldog Clothing, you might get websites with clothing for bulldogs, but you're looking for a t-shirt company for humans called Bulldog Clothing. This is just an example, so I don't know if it even exists. So in that situation, you'll want to use your advanced search techniques to search for bulldog clothing. Um, and so you do like bulldog clothing in quotes minus dogs. And so you'll get then more likely to get bulldog clothing uh, as a t-shirt company for humans. All right. Now, let me take a pause here. I'm going to just look in the chat real quick because I, I know this is a lot of a lot of Q and A, a lot of action in the chat. So before we move on to advanced search forms, I'm going to see if I can answer some quick questions in the chat. Got a comment that they're loving the images. Actually, it was Martin Malalu who created this presentation originally. One of our one of our former Makemos, um, and they decided to use all these pets, and I said absolutely, and I I, I held on to them for my presentation as well. All right, let's see. Just, I'm, I'm just going through the chat quickly um, to see. Okay, so we do have a few questions about safety. So some of my understanding, .nad.org.gov are legit websites. Is that true? .gov is always related to government websites. .nad and .org tend to be, so .org tends to be nonprofit organizations, but these days they, it's also political organizations are also .org sometimes, and .net can be at this point almost anything, although it's that, that net used to be a lot more popular and it's not as popular anymore. But yeah, the, of those .gov is pretty much the one that's still um, stable in what it represents. Uh, do you type your search into the initial search bar? You can type it in, you can go google.com and type it into that search bar or with many browsers, you can just type the search into the address bar and it'll automatically do a search for you. Are there specific search engines that are better than some tasks than others? Yes, there are. Although with po most popular search engines, you'll typically get the, the similar search results for most things that people are searching. So for most use cases, uh, popular search engines tend to be pretty good at them. Is there any concern for viruses with respect to any search engine? No. I think that with if, if all you're doing is typing in a search, um, you're not at risk for any kind of security issues. Now, when you start clicking on things, if you're clicking on things that you're not familiar with what they are, if you, know, you could go to a website that could potentially do provide cause harm to your community, but the actual search engine itself, the, you know, google.com, um, that, that does not pose in itself any kind of security issue. 
is plus an alternative to and. Um, I think it can be. I don't know if it is for Google. I haven't, I haven't heard of whether it is for Google. Um, I usually search with a full sentence. Is this a good or bad idea? Uh, it used to be a bad idea when search engines were more persnickety. Now it doesn't actually matter because Google will exclude um, sort of the connective words and just use the keywords that it uses. So it'll, it'll just be a, a big and search with excluding words like, I don't know, in or about, uh, you know, certain words that are considered stop words for search engine search, words that don't have uh, meaning for the actual thing that you're searching for. Um, it'll usually exclude those. So if you want to keep typing full sentences, you can. That's it's fine. Uh, do the quotation marks and parentheses do the same thing? Or what is the difference? Parentheses uh, indicate priority of which oper which expression you want to search for first. Uh, quotation marks make the, the words that you're searching for. It means you're searching for those two words together. So parentheses are something that's not used that often in searches, but quotation marks are used all the time. Oh, this is a really good example. So in quotation marks, wildlife preserves versus wildlife preserves will leave out strawberry jam. Yes, exactly. Oh, if you type in wildlife preserves uh, in quotation marks, that'll only search for those two words together. So it's very unlikely that you'll get results about jam. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and and continue the presentation and I'll get to some more of these questions towards the end, but I appreciate you posting. I'm just going through the chat here and I'm loving all these questions. All right, let's talk about advanced search forms. So you may have gotten the, po the point by this time in the presentation that there are many, many options for making your search more relevant through typing items into the search bar. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to remember all of those Boolean operators unless you want to. Most search engines now, I would probably say all search engines, have an advanced search form, which lets you fill out the form and it puts in those operators for you. So the one on the screen is really hard to see and that's, that's fine. I will actually go to one in a browser and show you a, a live demo in a couple of minutes. But as you can see on this screen, even, even lightly, there are a whole bunch of options in advanced search forms. So the simplest example of how an advanced search mirrors Boolean search is this. So we talked a little bit about wildlife preserves earlier, not strawberry jam. Uh, and so you see the search here, zoo and aquarium and wildlife preserve in quotes. So we don't actually need to have that little period there, but we do, but we have it here in the slide. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of the period. I don't like it. There. Live editing. And we're back. Okay, so the Google advanced search form has the two fields, find pages with all these words. So it'll look for the words zoo and aquarium. And then they, this exact word or phrase, wildlife preserve. So instead of having to type zoo and aquarium and wildlife preserve in a search bar, you can go to the advanced search and type in this exact word or phrase, wildlife preserve, and it'll automatically include those things for you in the search. So it's just a little shortcut. Advanced search also lets you do a few other things that you can do in the search bar if you want to, but with advanced search, you don't have to remember uh, what to type in exactly for these kind of searches. So what some examples of that would be, you can limit by a specific site or a domain type. So if you are searching for something and you only want government sites, so say you want you know COVID-19 information and you only want government sites to be returned to you in your search, then you put in, you type in COVID space site colon dot gov. And that'll own, then Google will only return sites with the domain type .gov. 
the site operator also lets you search with, within specific sites. So if you're interested in, say, something it, uh, from Time Magazine, and I, th I think their URL is or the web address is time.com. So you type in whatever you're interested in learning. So if you want to know, like, if they've done any articles about uh, thunderstorms lately. So I should stay with the pet theme. If you if you are interested in any articles they've done about bull mastiffs lately, then you type in bull mastiff space site colon time.com. And that'll only search within that domain. It's really convenient for websites that are really gigantic if you're really interested in something specific on that website. You can also limit your search by file types. So most file types that, that Google re, uh, returns to you are web pages. So web pages are actually just files. So like .html files, um, they're files that are interpreted for you by your web browser. They're .html files, uh, .php files, and et cetera, et cetera. They're, they're just types of files. You can also search for files like .pdf. So you can search for PDFs via Google. There, so any PDF that's on the World Wide Web that's accessible, you can use Google to search for that type of file for you. You can also search for you know, Excel files, slides, you can search for video files, so .mov, um, you can search for a music file, so .mp3, say, there's many, many, many types of files out there, and Google allows you to narrow your search by that type of file. You can also search, and this is a really interesting feature that I don't use that much, and I've never really actually really even used in the wild until I learned about it recently. Um, it's not, it doesn't work that well, except for very, in very specific cases, and that is the related search. So Google uses its vast AI and algorithm knowledge to help you find sites that are related to other sites. So the best uh, situation where this works is if you're looking for a type of online shop, say you're looking for a pet shop, you can, and you know, you already know about Petco. You're looking for other stores that sell pet stuff online. You can type in Petco, or you just think if you can type in related colon petco.com, and Google will return results to you of sites that it things are related to petco.com. And I did that search recently, so I know that that one works. Um, there are some other ones that don't work as well. There's a lot of ways the website is a little bit more obscure or its purpose is a little bit more complicated, then the related is just not going to return any results. But I know that when I searched for our library colleagues at the Los Angeles Public Library, I searched for related colon lapl.org, um, it returned other library websites. So I know that it that the related operator works. Now, I think now is that, you know what, I'm going to go back. Now is the time for me to close up this presentation, or at least minimize this presentation, and do some advanced searches, just show you how what the advanced search bar looks like. Let me quickly go into the chat. I'm going to see if there's any new questions here. And then, so there's a lot of questions in the Q&A. And I'm going to answer those towards the end, but right now I'm just quickly looking in the chat to see if there's something that I could answer um, really quickly before getting into the search. Uh, by the way, what do you think, what do you know about DuckDuckGo? Um, I like DuckDuckGo. I use DuckDuckGo as my default browser uh, my default web browser. So it's like Chrome, like Firefox, my default web browser on my mobile phone. Um, DuckDuckGo is a privacy conscious web browser. So it does not store any information about you. And it blocks websites from using cookies unless the cookie is something that's required for the website to load. So I recommend DuckDuckGo. I've, uh, I don't believe, I don't know if they have a so they don't yet have a web browser for the PC or for like the desktop computer. You can go to DuckDuckGo.com um, and use a search engine, but they do have a browser for the mobile phone. So I, I, I recommend it. It works very well for me. Um, what is Google actually searching? That's a fantastic question. 
I love that somebody asked that question because that gets right into what is web search. So what is Google searching? Google is searching all of the files that are connected to the World Wide Web. What the World Wide Web is in a nutshell, or at least the parts that we that we're using, they're just files on servers. So like I mentioned, .html files, .php files, various website files. And what Google's doing is it's crawling those website files on servers. Servers are just pieces of, uh, they're just computers that they're fancy designed for storage and designed to get requests and return requests. And what those, what, is, what are people requesting? People, when you type in a website, you're requesting a file from a, ser a server somewhere. That server gets that request and, and sends you that file back and your browser shows it to you. So what's Google searching? Google is crawling all of those files on all of those servers. It's pretty complicated. It's also pretty amazing. Is there a tendency that Google will monopolize the search market and others will cease to exist? Well, Google already has the lion's share of market share in search. Um, and many search engines have fallen by the wayside over the years. I remember back in the, the early days or the early-ish days over the World Wide Web when we used Lyco search, when we used, when Yahoo search was like the big, the big deal, when we used uh, Alta Vista. None of these exist anymore as Jeeves was, it was big at, at that time. We never use these anymore. So the search engine market is constantly shifting, but Google is a huge player in the market. And while most there, it's unlikely there's going to be a lot of other huge search engines, there are little search engines that have sort of niche, um, niche things to do. For example, Tin Eye with image search. Even though Google has image search, there's also these other ones, or Wolfram Alpha with mathematical expressions and things like that. Um, if I want to search only one source, for example, I want the county civil code for a topic, say noise regulation on noise, I would recommend going to the website that has the county civil code and searching there. Um, so we're talking about advanced search, but let me tell you a, I don't know, it's not really a secret, it's, it, but for me, it's like a librarian uh, saying that, I don't know, I made it up, I don't know if other people say it. The best way to find something that you're looking for is to go to the, the exact website that you need. So if you are if you need some tax information, go to irs.gov. If you need some information about you know, county civil codes, go to the website with the county civil code. Uh, don't try, type it into Google. Save yourself the time. Just go straight to the website. Is it safer to search using a private browser? It depends on what you're trying to be safe against. Um, it's not safe for, I mean, you could still click on a website that's, that has malware on it. Um, a private browser may not track what you're searching for, um, but if you're searching Google, it'll still, you know, that, that web traffic is still going through. So it depends on what you mean by safer. Can you repeat how to look up for an article in a specific magazine, please? So it's not a specific magazine, but a specific website. So you can look for anything you want, any keywords you want on a specific website. So if you want to look for uh, articles about a certain type of dog on time dot, at Time Magazine, which I think is time.com, you type in that word, you type in site colon time.com, and it'll, it'll take you there. Just look for that keyword within that website. Uh, so on Google sites labeled ad pop up first, how do I block them? There are extensions An extension is a little program that you can put, you can install on your web browser that will block ads. Um, uh, so there are ad blocking extensions. Um, I don't know if those actually will block the Google ads. I don't, I don't even pay attention to them anymore. I just scroll past them. Uh, DuckDuckGo does have an ex a web browser extension for laptops. Thank you for that. So one of our attendees just mentioned that DuckDuckGo has a web extent, web browser extension. Um, so you can actually use D uh, DuckDuckGo as your primary search engine without having to go to DuckDuckGo.com. I'm gonna make a note to uh, post that. Um, I'm gonna make a note to include that in the follow-up email. So if you're, you know, I'm, I'm talking about a lot of different stuff. So if you're afraid of missing anything, 
as part of this presentation, you know, don't worry about it. This will all be sent to you in a follow-up email. This presentation, the the slides and links that we mentioned. Uh, okay, so uh, don't understand what you made. You made a distinction about using DuckDuckGo on a desktop versus on a phone or iPad. So on a so there's different mediums. Um, have different software for it, so different versions of software. So there's uh, there are apps that are on your phone, and then there are apps for the computer. The apps for the computer are not this; they're different versions of the same software. So they're for for instance, you might have Skype on your phone, you might have Skype on your computer. Even though those are it's the same software, it's actually a different piece of software on your computer and a different piece of software on your phone. So some uh, companies don't make apps for phones. They only make apps for the PC um, because there's vastly different requirements for that on your, for software on your laptop than on the phone. And so DuckDuckGo has an actual app for the phone, but it doesn't have an app for the computer. It's just it's within the, it has a browser extension and it has a website. Uh, is it legit and truthful when some companies claim they can place your business name on top of the Google search? If so, how long it can stay at the top of the Google search? It, it can be legit and truthful. So there's something called SEO, search engine optimization, which there are people who try to understand or game the Google algorithm and get sites to the top of the results because for obvious reasons in in the commerce type situation you want your site to appear first so if i want you know if i want pet food in my area uh, there are companies who benefit financially from having their website up there first so there are people yeah people can do that um doesn't just because a company claims it doesn't mean that they're good at it but um, yeah, there, there, there are ways to do that. There, and people are trying to constantly figure out because Google is always changing their algorithm. So people are always trying to figure out how to make that happen. Um, and there's no telling how long it can stay up there. It really depends on the specific site, depends on the, the techniques they're using and how quickly Google is changing their algorithm. Sometimes you find wonderful things by accident, more like search it, rousing the stacks by not refining your search. That is true. Yeah, you can, it's, when you surf the web, you're truly surfing and you can have an exciting time if you're not refining your search. That's true. Yes, maybe you could defer answers for non-search related questions until the end. So we may have more time for advanced search questions. Absolutely, yes. Actually, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pause and answering questions and I'm going to do some advanced searches so you can see. Um, oh, it, here's a very quick search questions. You mentioned going directly to a website to save time. If you don't know the website name, what's the best way to find it? So we all know irs.gov. So that's an example. I mean, that's so we know we know that the website for the IRS is irs.gov. We know the website for like the White House is whitehouse.gov. There are certain websites that we just know what they are. But if you're not sure what they are, you can always search Internal Revenue Service on Google and it'll give you the direct website. You can just go, go right to it. So that's just one simple search. But you don't need to search like tax law, California. You can, you can go to the Franchise Tax Board in California and go straight to the source. All right, let's, let's get into some searches. So I'm going to share a different window here and we'll do a quick advanced search. So if somebody wants me to search for something specific, uh, go ahead and throw it in the chat and I will I will do that. Otherwise, I'm just going to search for dogs. I guess I can also search for cats. Okay, so here I am in Google search. I, I'm going to just type an advanced search because I don't remember the URL for the advanced search. And the first thing comes up, advanced search. So here up here, we also have advanced search features, by the way. So these we can search books, news, video, shopping, more. Do an image search right here, maps, flights, finance. Sometimes if you're looking for something specific within these fields, it's better to, to search what you're looking for and then just click on one of these things up here. By default, it searches for all. And sometimes it'll know what you're searching for and give you the more specific results, but you can also narrow down right over here. Now, tools is where it's at, because this starts giving you some advanced search features right without having to click advanced search. 
see when you click tools over here on the side, I can draw on it actually. Here it is, when you click tools, it'll give you this right here. This so you can do a search for when a website was last updated and when it was posted. And then I'm gonna see what all results goes, so clear my drawings. And then we do, so all results um, or verbatim, so it's gonna type in verbatim advanced search. So clear that. So I really like using the anytime for when you're searching for something that's time sensitive, um, especially when you're looking for something that like tech support for a certain piece of software, because for instance, Microsoft Word has existed for a pretty long time, for decades and decades and decades. So when you search for a tip about how to do something in Microsoft Word, it may return results from a, an older version of Word. However, if you search, if you do past year or custom range in the last couple of years, it's more likely to give you a better search. So let's go to the advanced search page. Okay, so we already covered. I'm looking at what I'm, I'm going to the chat uh, to see what people are interested in searching for. Oh, this is some really interesting search. Okay. All right, so here's the advanced search page. Let me give you a quick tour and then we'll do a, a few searches. So let's see. So here we, we know this, all these words. So this is the and search, the exact phrase. This is putting something in quotes. Here it's putting rat terrier in quotes. They know all about dogs. Any of these words, this is the or search. This is the basics that what we talked about earlier. None of these words. So this is the minus. Numbers. I have never used this number number search, but I suppose you can also search for num certain numbers or a certain range of numbers um, within Google. I can't offhand think of a use case for that, but I'm sure that there is. You can also search by language. Advanced, interestingly, you can search for websites in Esperanto. You can search for sites within a certain region. What this will probably do is it'll probably limit the domain type to that country's um, that country's uh, domain, and that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't because, in reality, people can buy domains from domain um, extensions from other countries, and so they may not actually help. But I I believe it does that, but it may it may be more advanced. So it's probably more advanced when it was last updated. Um, search by domains that we talked about. This is the site colon. So you can search by site or domain. Um, terms appearing. This is actually a really interesting one because this gives you a lot more control of where you're searching within that page. So anywhere on the page, in the title of the page, in the text of the page, but not in the title, in the URL of the page, so in the web address of the page, and in the links on the page. So you can see what you can see what they're linking to. You can search just the links on a certain page. And then, of course, file type gives you a bunch of different file types. Not, not as many as I thought, actually, but I think most of the ones that are that are needed. I've personally mostly just searched for PDF and PowerPoint files, and I think I've searched for Excel files, but there are other options here. And then, of course, usage rights. This is interesting for those who are trying to find content that they can reuse or, you know, if they're, you're interested in copyright, um, you can also determine what's safe to use, reuse for your social media or for, you know, creating a different artworks or other creative endeavors. So not filter by license, free to use or share. So these are some general, these aren't specific licenses, but I think Google uses these terms to then limit to licenses. Okay. So let me see what this chat says and see what see what we're gonna search today. Numbers is for years, yes. Years is a, is for numbers that ranging from it's years. Are you did I manage? Am I sharing the are you guys seeing the the advanced search screen here? Did I forget did I forget to share it? I thought I did share it. Yes, we can see it, Oleg. Okay, okay, just making sure. Okay, good. Yeah, I was worried. I, I I got something in the chat that says that you're not able to, but yes. Okay, good. 
Okay, let's look for, this is really interesting. Compound, uh, somebody made a search to look for compounding pharmacies located in Finland, Estonia, Lithuania, Belarus, Poland, or the UK. Uh, so all those are countries. So I would recommend instead of searching for specific countries, I would say look for a specific city within those countries because that would that would produce a more relevant result because there are, I presume that there are many compounding pharmacies in Finland and it depends on where you're trying to go. It may not be a, such a quick drive to go to one all the way across the country. But why not? Let's, let's try this. I'm actually just curious what this is going to be. So let's do um, this exact word or phrase, compounding pharmacies. This is the great thing about just opening up the, the examples to the chat, because I would have never thought to search for compounding pharmacies in Finland. So let's search for compounding pharmacies. I'm going to see how this region works. I'm just going to type in Finland. So I'm scrolling down all the way down to Finland. And let's see what comes up. The nice thing about search now is that we can do many, many, many searches. Um, and we don't have to pay anything. In the past, uh, before, uh, before the World Wide Web, you had to pay per search. It became very common. So then you had to really structure your query in a very careful way because you'd have to pay for the results. So you really wanted relevant results. Otherwise, it would be very expensive. Now that's no longer the case, which is fantastic. So actually, I don't think that these are very good results. So we've compounding pharmacies and we're searching by, we search by Finland, but it comes up with the ones for me in Beverly Hills and Burbank and on Hillhurst Avenue. That's not what I want. Compounding pharmacy market size. So this is, looks like companies, International Journal of Pharmaceutical Compounding. Um, this looks like it's a journal that's based in Finland. Um, some information about compounding pharmacy is not what I'm interested in. There's a Facebook, Let's Go Medical. So this is a Facebook page for in, at Ucivo. This is not a great search. I think there's a better way to do that. What I would do if I was searching for compounding pharmacies in Finland is I would click on maps. I would, do, that way, this will give me a chance to limit my search. So I'm gonna go back out all the way. I'm gonna go all over to Finland. Here's Finland. So let's go to say, let's, let's go to Helsinki. So here's Metropolitan and Helsinki. And let's click search this area. So we're not getting a very good search. And the reason for that might be that the results might be in, might need to be in Finnish. So how, how are we going to get around that? I don't speak Finnish, but Google Translate does. So I'm going to go to translate.google.com. I'm going to type in English compounding pharmacies, and then I'm going to go to, so this is, how you, this is how you say it in Japanese. I want to know how to say it in Finnish. Go to Finnish. So I presume that's how you do it. If I click on it, it'll tell me how to say it. Apteki means pharmacy. Now I know. Uh, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this. Connecting farms. This is, I don't know if this is a really a good, a good translation. Um, let's just see what comes up when we type this in. This is probably going to be a pretty, uh, pretty poor search because I don't know if connecting pharmacies really is a good translation. Okay, so we've got a lot of we've got pharmacies that come up. So we've got plenty of pharmacies. So we know that um, I guess apotheca is another term pharmacy. So there's, I see variations of apteki. Uh, so there's a lot of pharmacies here. So then in this situation where it probably would be helpful to have some, some finish in order to be able to get a good result here, but we'd have to go through individual ones in the area that we're looking for um, to determine whether they're actually compounding pharmacies or they're just general, general pharmacies. So that's as far as I'm going to go with this search, I think, just because this could get really involved. And I think only one person is interested in. I can, oh, somebody said I can help in Russian search. I can also help in Russian because I speak Russian too. Uh, let's see. 
searching pharmacies will exclude pharmacy, maybe truncate. Oh, I see. So we, we, what we could do, so that's, that's a good point. So I, I think that Google will kind of get it, but what we could do is do a, I don't know if Google does wildcards. Let's, let's see. So what a wildcard is, so I'm going to do, just go to google.com. This is another uh, search thing, but I, I, but I don't recall if Google actually lets you do this. So what a wildcard is, is it lets you search for a part of the word and then any um, end to that word. So let's do, let's do, um, so we're if we're talking about the word like pup, we do like that. Then it'll search for puppy, uh, puppet. So maybe it's not good. Maybe I'll do it, any, any ending to P-U-P-P -P and whatever ends there. P-U-P, -P, oh, I don't think I want to look at that. This looks like some kind of skin condition. The things you learn. Yeah, let's not look at the pictures. Skin rash during pregnancy. This is not what we were looking for. See, this is what we're talking about, like serendipity of search. So this wild card ended up giving us a lot more than we were. Let's maybe look for, hmm. No, not going to do that one. Anyway, the wild card gives us the end of that word. I'm going to I'm going to stop my my searches here because I feel like we're going to get in trouble doing these wild card searches. All right, let's see. Um, there's oh, it's an interesting question. What water park in Los Angeles has the most shade? So that's a really fascinating question, and I would like to answer that question, although I, in, I doubt that anybody has, I'm not sure if anybody has actually posted the answer to that question online. And so, of course, when you search Google, you're only searching for something that, information that exists already. Um, if I was trying to ballpark that, oh, somebody says, what is the wildcard symbol? It's an asterisk. Yeah, wildcard is an asterisk. So you, you type in the beginning of the word and then an asterisk, and that'll search for the rest of it. All right, so, well, I was gonna, the, the way that you, that I would look for which water park has the most shade, I mean, you could search that sort of thing, which water park has the most shade in Los Angeles, and that might, somebody might have done that already. I would look for at Google Maps and do a satellite view and then just see which one has the most shade, see which one has the most trees and stuff. All right, so let's do a let's do a simple search here because we're getting pretty um, we're getting pretty uh, pretty deep in the weeds here. So let's do a Anna Sylvia, do you do you have an idea for a search that we that we should do? Cats. <laughs> a little bit more specific. Um, do, you, do you have a question about cats? Let me see. I'm trying to think. My cat's been cleaning herself like uh, a lot. So maybe why do cats clean themselves? Like, yeah. I don't know if that's like how to word it in a way that that's a good, that's, that's, a, that's a really good example, actually, because if we put cat cleaning, we might get results for pet uh, groomers. That's not what we're interested. Let's do um, cat cleaning a lot and exclude the word on here. Uh, none of these words exclude the word groomers. So let's do that. Scroll all the way down. Do advanced search. Why Google already said it came up with a little knowledge thing for us. It's a featured snippet. Why do cats lick so much? Cats lick to show affection. They can, can signal your cat as a medical issue, an allergy, or stress and anxiety. That, that's that's uh, thought provoking. Now, this comes from the website GoodRx, so it may be a, a legitimate website, may be a website that's not providing such great information. Um, people ask, why is my cat constantly cleaning? Two main causes this comes from Purina, which is the, the cat food company. Two main causes for grooming are cats, are, so stress relief, psychogenic alopecia and medical and skin allergies. So it's either psychological or physical. So I suppose what Google is trying to say here, or these websites are trying to say here is that you might take your cat to the vet 
Yeah, now I'm thinking I, I need to because that's yeah. exactly what she's been doing. She's been grooming herself a lot more than usual. So thank you for that search. Sure. Yeah, I don't know if that, that put your mind at ease. But... No, it didn't, but at least it helped me know that it wasn't normal. So yeah, that's not something that happens. All right, so let's go back. So we did just an advanced search there. So I think we've covered the basics of how to use the advanced search form. Um, what I would recommend is if you're if you have any curiosity in doing advanced search, is go to this form and just play around with it. Put in different words. If you're if whatever you're you have an interest in, try to craft different searches around it and see what comes up. Like I said before, doing a search is free. Um, all it takes is your interest and your time. So if you have interest in time, then fool around with narrowing down these results. And if you speak a different language, try to search in that language, um, but put different things in and just see how the results change. And then go to bing.com and search Microsoft Bing and see how Bing results are different. And then go to duck.go and see how their results are different because it's, it's fascinating to see what each search engine, uh, what preference and priorities each search engine goes towards. So let me stop sharing this and just really quickly finish up the presentation and then we'll just dive right into questions. So we covered all these already. So in summary, adding our Boolean operators and using advanced search help you create a more high quality and relevant search. It save you time and effort in retrieving relevant information. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of our class today, there are a great many resources available to level up your searching, including the ones on the screen here. We have a whole LinkedIn learning course on online searching tips and tricks. There's books like The Joy of Search, Google Searching Like a Pro, and Harnessing the Power of Google, available both as ebooks and as physical books. So I recommend if you're interested in becoming a search pro, then check out these resources. So before we get into the Q&A, go ahead and open up the chat and let me know the most interesting or surprising thing that you learned via this presentation. Don't put it in the Q&A because we've got a lot of stuff in the Q&A already. Put it in the chat, so the, little, the little speech bubble at the bottom of your screen. I'm curious, what was the most interesting thing that you've learned during this presentation? I see a few people have mentioned that initially they were intimidated, but now it's much more approachable, reaching the advanced search site. Yes, it's not, it's not there. So in on usually on library databases, the advanced search link is right there with Google. It's not, it, I think at one point, maybe it used to be there. It used to be somewhere obvious where you can click on it, but now it's not obvious anymore because not that many people use it, but accessing it is, is really nice. It's most Boolean logic. Uh, yes, Boolean logic is, is very, very powerful. It doesn't seem like it because only three words, but these three words, they're the basis of computer science. Oh, there's interesting. Somebody didn't do they, they could search for different licenses. Yeah, I like, I, I actually use that all the time when I'm searching for images to use um, in, on presentations, for instance. Um, I usually like to use either public domain or creative commons licensed images. And so Google lets, there are actually websites that let you, so you can go to like openverse.com and search for Creative Commons. Those are all Creative Commons, but Google also lets you do it. And image, Google image search can be kind of, can be fast and sometimes a little bit more vast than other searches. But for Creative Commons, I usually just go to openverse.com. So excluding. Ah, somebody learned that the Google Maps, you can search this area feature. I use that all the time. I just moved to this area to Montrose, um, which is in just northern Glendale. And I use the search. I'm always looking for things. They just look, look for interesting places to go, you know, shoe repair shops, all kinds of stuff. And so I'm always moving my Google Map to this area and hitting search this area. Oh, 
but somebody that said they appreciate knowing how long these Zoom classes will last. So our presentations for a digital literacy classes tend to be about 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes a little bit shorter, but usually 30 minutes to an hour, and then our Q&A can last for another hour, um, depending on how many questions we get. So if you're just interested in the presentation, then you can budget from 11 o'clock to about noon um, is, is a safe bet. And then, of course, if you want to watch the Q and A later, it'll it'll be on our YouTube channel, so you can you can zoom into the Q and A. That's great. Can we find a particular on Bing or others, for example, not on Google? Yes. Yeah, so, if you're interested in finding advanced, so the advanced search features that you find on Google are also available on po other popular search engines. So, there's advanced search screens, just like the one you saw on Google. There is one through Yahoo, there's one through Bing. So if you type, go to Bing and type in advanced search, it'll come up with its own advanced search and it'll have pretty similar features. I see somebody's interested in uh, copyright free sources. I can put some links to copyright free sources or not so much necessarily copyright free, but copyright per, more permissible licenses. Yeah, I can put a few websites. I, I use them all the time, so I can, I don't have to look for them. I already know where they are. How can I find your YouTube channel? YouTube.com backslash LA County Library. All right. So let's go to some of the questions in the Q&A. Thank you, everybody, for your responses to what, what's the most interesting thing you learned. Um, I'm you know, doing these presentations, instructions, these presentations. I always, I'm always curious about what is the most interesting thing that you covered, that, well, that, that I covered. Because you know, I never know, you know for me, every, all of these things are interesting. I really enjoy teaching all of these things. But what, is, what people focus on is, is, is interesting for me. Because then I can think about, in future classes, what kind of things to cover. All right, um, Anna Sylvia, would you mind uh, getting on and then we can go through the Q&A because there's, there's a lot of questions here. Sorry, can you repeat that? It cut out a little bit for me. Would you, you want mind? me to go through the Q&A? Yeah, would you mind going through the Q&A? Yeah. Sure, yeah, we have a lot of questions. Um, let me pull this up. So we still have some people um, that are interested in the image search. Okay, um, so let's do that. Okay. So let me go ahead and stop sharing here. Let's do the image searching because yeah, I, I image searching is really neat. Um, let's let me share my browser again. And we'll play around with that. Okay, so I talked earlier about just going straight to the website. So typically, when I'm trying to do an image search, I go to images.google.com. And so you can search specifically for images. So if I want to type images for, I don't know, let's try bull terriers. You get images for bull terriers, you can. There's images you can you can post you can buy for dog lovers, and there's different images here. If you want to search by license, you can do usage rights, Creative Commons license. So these are usually images that you can use with attribution. So there's this. Now the other side of image search is actually searching by an image. So I wonder if I haven't. Let me let me download an image. So let me, let's go to, I'm going to step in, I'm going to grab an image of a dog park, just any dog park and just see what happens. So let's do an image search for dog park. So let's say, I don't know, let's do this one. This looks like this mashable.com. So this is probably just the general image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, save this image. I'm going to save it onto my computer. And then I'm going to upload it. So you, I don't know if you're able to see the save as screen here. And so we were able, were you able to see the save as screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, good. So it's not, what I'm doing is not totally random. Okay, so then let's go to, let's go back to images.google.com. And so here's a search bar. So this is where you search, we're using keywords. Here you see a little camera. You click the camera 
So you can paste an image URL. So if, you, if you're interested in searching an image that's already on the web, you can grab that URL, usually by right-clicking the image and clicking save image address or copy image address. I just downloaded an image, so I'm gonna, which download means you take something from the computer, um, from the web and put it onto your computer. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the file. And that was the one we just used. So the one about the dog park right here, select that one. It's gonna upload. So uploading means putting an image from the computer, uh, from your computer up on the web. So I uploaded the, this image. And so what Google's gonna do is it's gonna search for that image. So before I thought it was just, oh, just random dog park, just a bunch of dogs. But when we do this, we can learn potentially, is this, this Ashley Wilder dog park at Nightdale Station Park? Let me click on that. So it, it, what Google does is usually search for images that are similar to this possible related to the dog park. So it knows, um, even if I don't search dog park here, if I search just for the image, you know, it, it'll know that it's a dog park. Um, let me click in here and see what, see if this is actually that dog park that we were talking about. I see, you give me a different dog park. So it knew that that image was from a dog park, maybe because it was called dog park or something. But I think what it did was its AI recognized what was in the image and said, oh, this looks like a dog park. So it gave me a bunch of other pictures of dog parks. So if you're looking for similar pictures, this is where the image was originally used, mashable.com, but it was also used on all these other websites because it's just a stock image. So it was used, it was used on Mashable before. So if we go through these, you guys talk park near me. So it's using a lot of images about dog parks. I wonder if this is the unveiling new dog park. Let me click here. I'm curious which stuff. So sometimes if there's if you search for if there's an image of a place and you're not sure what that place is, like if it's a, some kind of landmark location, you can do an image search and it'll tell you, it'll find what that place is for you. So I think this is just, it just also, this place just used, I don't think Dayton Dog Park actually looks like that one. I think it just used that one as a, that image as a, as a stock image also. So a lot of websites have used this image. So for instance, if you're a photographer and you think that your, your photograph may have been stolen or you wanna know if your photograph has been used online or stolen, you can search for it using an image search and then Google will find for you if it's been used on other websites. And here I'm back in the dog, back in the dog park. There's also a website called 10 eye, which essentially does the same thing. So it's a reverse image search is what it's called. So it's the same thing. You, you upload the image here. So we're going to put down. So we're going to put the image on here and here give us 17 results. So it searched 55.5 billion images in 1.7 seconds. What a world we live in. Uh, so here's where the stock photo came from this website, Six Dogs in a Park. You can buy this stock photo. Um, and then Mashable has used this image a lot. Uh, Math Rep, you may, I don't know what this website is, but it's used this image, Oklahoma City Police Investigation. I don't know. This is, a, oh, this looks like a, it looks like a website maybe for a radio station or some kind of news source. They've used this image. The Spruce Pets, we already know because Google has shown us that before. Yeah. So that's, that's essentially an image search. All right, let's go to the next question. Sure. Um, before we move on from that one, mm -hmm. the way that you uploaded it to Google, would that be similar reverse image searching as well? We have a question about that reverse image search on Google. Yeah, so it's, so what I did was advanced. That wasn't a reverse image search. So it, the reverse part is that it's searching using the image instead of searching words. So that's, that's the reverse aspect of it. So what, what we do here with Google image by searching by image, by clicking this little camera and uploading the image, that is a reverse image search. Okay. Next question. Um, does Google contain all information that Bing and others might have? They are very, their crawlers probably overlap quite a bit. They, they may not contain air. I can't say with assurance they contain everything, but I would say that they're probably pretty close. Great. Next question. How does a search question get listed as a question on Google? Is it frequency or something else? Oh, do you mean uh, when you type in, when you go to google.com and you start typing something? So like, 
how long do cats live? That's what I was going to do. I was going to type in how long do cats live? Um, how did it know? Um, and the, the way that it knew was yes, because so many people do searches, Google has kind of a probability engine to figure out. You probably, if, you're, if you've typed in how long do cats, then most people, when they've typed in those words, they use these other words. They also, I presume, use some sort of AI uh, machine learning kind of thing. So uh, there, there are, um, there's the computer, they've created algorithms that try to understand how questions are structured, and then they're able to predict what would come after it. So I think it's a combination of what people search for and what the computer thinks is going to be a, a likely question. I think that was, I think that was what the question was asking. I think so. I think that's the question. Um, that's, that's all they, they type the questions get listed as questions. Um, yep. So I think, I think that's what they meant, but you're, um, you can clarify if that's not what you wanted. Uh, next question. So this question is, is sort of how to find um, legitimate reviewers for for so, so they want to know, like they want to, they're interested in the new Google phone. How would they be able to find independent reviewers that would give them honest results with professional credentials? You mean the Pixel 6a now available? <laughs> um, that's a great question. We actually covered that a little bit. Actually, we covered that a lot in how to become an empowered consumer, which is a different program that we had. I'm going to post a link to that in the chat. I'm going to go to our YouTube channel. I'm going to, I'm going to post a link to that right now. So let's cover uh, specifically search questions right now, um, because that question is, re is answered in depth in that presentation. So we're going to, so this is our digital literacy playlist. So you can go back to our past videos and explore. So I'm going to go to how to become an empowered consumer, which we just did recently. We actually have done it twice. So this, this was the second one. So I'm going to click on that. That's me. Uh, and then I'm going to select this, share, and then copy. All right, what's the next question, Olivia? So this is, um, there were all, a few people, so I'll combine this with this question. Mm -hmm. They were asking about cookies. How do you handle requests for cookies? Sort of just in general, what are they? Do you need to accept them? So I guess if yeah. you could touch on, on cookies. I'm going to do that really quickly because it's not related to search. Um, a cookie is a is a is a file that's stored on your computer that uh, records some information. Cookies do different things, but it records it keeps some sort of information about your browsing. Um, cookies, for the most part, are pretty innocuous. Um, for instance, whenever you're logged into a website, the way that the browser knows that you're logged in, that that website knows that you're logged in, is because there's a cookie on your computer that says you're logged into this website. So when you go back to it, you don't have to log in again. Cookies can also store like sort of your preferences on a certain site. Um, they can, in a more kind of creepy way, they can store, st go, st um, they can store the place that you've been, the place that you're going. Um, so if you want to be, cookies generally are not unsafe. They're not in themselves a security risk. They can just be, they can just create creepy situations where it seems like there are sites like Facebook that are following you online because they are. Uh, and then when you go back to Facebook after looking for, you know, a, uh, looking for buying a new jacket, all of a sudden Facebook will have a bunch of ads about jackets for you. So that's the you can you can clear cookies uh, relatively easily on your browser. Um, I'm not going to get into how to do that now, but if you search for clearing cookies in the name of your browser, Chrome or Firefox, then you'll get a really easy tutorial to telling you how to do that. Perfect. So this is a oh where did we go? Oh, this is a search related question. So what is the difference between putting something in quotes versus parentheses? I think I covered that one uh, way earlier, so I'm going to do it really quickly again. When you put something in parentheses, that's just priority. It, it tells Google to search for this part first. Um, if you're doing it in quotes, this will search for these two words in exactly this order with nothing, with just a space in between them. So it'll search for the, this exact phrase. 
what's next? Okay, so I'm trying to find a lot of these are just sort of like a not um, search related. Mm -hmm. So let me try to find one that is before we we move on to these. I think you covered a lot of these a Boolean searches, finding Google search. Um, let's see, please explain the difference between search and address bar versus search bar. I'm not sure if you covered that in the beginning. Uh, search address bar versus search bar. Um, so this right here, this is the address bar. So this is usually where you type in a web address, so good google.com, but you can also type in searches here. So let's type in searches for Siamese cats. And this will automatically search for you. And you can decide which search engine um, is used here. On Chrome, by default, it's Google. So if you, you, can, you don't have to go to google.com to search. So this is the same thing, typing Siamese cats here. But the way if you use the address, the, the, the browser knows when you type in just the words here that you're not trying to go to a website. So they'll automatically default by giving you a Google search. So that's this is a web address bar. This is a search bar. All right, what's next? Right. Um, this one, I'm not sure what it means. Maybe you, you will know a little bit. Do you have to add the period in front of the file? So for example. Oh yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, so I usually do. I don't know if you actually have to, let's find out. So let's type in uh, dog training. Let's type in hamster training. We haven't, the hamsters are, we haven't talked much about hamsters today. And let's type in uh, file. And I wonder if anybody has a PDF about hamster training. So I type in dot PDF, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna copy this so I can easily get this later. All right, hamster, so there's, yeah. So actually, yeah, so uh, I accept a model. So this looks like, but is this even a P, this, this search even gave give me what I want? Oh, you know what? This needs to be type, not file. That's why it didn't work. I was wondering, why is this giving PDFs? Okay, hamster college graduate course? What? The things you learn. <laughs> okay, so I typed in dot PDF and it, it did work by giving me all the PDFs. Let me just type in PDF without the dot and see what happens. Yeah, you don't have to type in the dot. It looks like it works without the dot too. This is, yeah, this is a PDF. That was the most interesting thing I've learned in this presentation. I wanna, I wanna click and see what's, I'm not gonna do it, <laughs> uh, but that's really interesting. <laughs> what other questions? How do you choose sort by range for display results? Uh, sort by range? Yes, it says, how do you choose sort by, sort by date? Oh, I'm sorry, sort by date range? Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. Okay, so you go to tools and then you go to anytime and then you do scroll, go all the way down to custom range and that lets you do the range. So if you just type in the year, so if like 2001 to 2007, it'll just January 1st, 2001 to January 1st, 2007. And there are apparently, um, hamster training uh, PDFs from December 2001 to December this December 31st, 2007. Mm -hmm. All right, what else? So I, I do remember that you answered this, but just to clarify again, the character after the wild card, um, that was an asterisk, right? Asterisk, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's see more. So while I Comb through the again. asterisk operator. Operator for the wild card. I actually didn't know that. That was really interesting. Yeah, the wild card goes way too. back in search history. That one, it's been around for a long time. Most people don't use it with Google searches because it doesn't, it's not something that you, you, that useful that often, but it's it's fun. It's nice to know it's available. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, I think, the same as what you already mentioned before, but how Google knows their answers before um, you type them. And yeah, I covered that one. Okay. All right. Um, how to type it in the search bar. Already answered that. And if you'd like to kind of demonstrate again, someone was interested in knowing what an advanced search looks like for Great Dane. 
uh, it depends on what you're searching for. I mean, you don't really need to search and do an advanced search for Great Dane. Um, an advanced search is, I mean, if you type in Great Dane, I mean, you'll get the breed of Great Dane. Um, it's not, Great Dane is not necessarily a word that, I mean, most people, when you combine the words Great Dane, they, they know that it's a breed. There aren't really, there isn't a ton of, um, there's a ton of movement um, around those terms. Um, I suppose you can do you can do Great Dane quotes, but it really I don't for this specific search it really isn't necessary to do an advanced search. Um, if you're looking for something really really specific about Great Danes or Great Danes from a certain place, that might be more uh, that might require more advanced searching. So just by itself, Great Dane doesn't really require an advanced search. Next question, would you say only one or two first research results are getting reviewed by most people? What is the point and the reasons then for billions of others to stay on the web? People put all sorts of things on the web. <laughs> so that's that's a really interesting question. I would say the first, the top 10 results are the ones that get definitely get looked at the most. But again, there are, very, there are a great many ways to get to sites on the web be, besides a search engine. So if you're, for example, if you have a blog that you really like to read or a news site that you really like to read and they link to a site that is not so popular, that site that they link to may not appear very high in Google search results, but because you got to it from somewhere else, it doesn't make any difference. You didn't even use a search. Or if you are, you know, if you're, if you go to a restaurant and use, you know, take a picture of their a QR code of and get to their menu, you know, that menu is a web page, but most people will probably not be searching for that. You know, they, they won't be searching for that very often. So that, that menu won't appear very high on the search results. And if you type in, you know, a uh, Korean restaurant, Los Angeles, they're probably going to be, you know, thousands and thousands, thousands of search results. You know, why aren't that, why are the only top 10 appearing? Because perhaps the top 10 are the ones that get searched for the most, but somebody might need the 500th or the thousand search results because that's the restaurant they're at. So it's, I don't, that's a really, that's a complicated question. And my, I don't know if my answer is really, but it's basically there's a lot of websites because there are a lot of humans that put up websites and it's really easy to put a site up on the internet, whether it gets a lot of views or not. And I just want to clarify the great Jane question was looking for female five years or, or older. Oh, um, I see. So, oh, I see. Okay. So, so looking to purchase, I wonder. Adopt. Adopt. Okay. I think it's adopt. Yeah. All right. So. I think that might be probably, it might be good to go local on that. So Los Angeles, Great Dane adoption. So the question here is, so if I type in that, that might sort of lead us to groups within the Los Angeles area that foster or adopt Great Danes. Um, now we can also do rescue because I saw some rescue uh, come up also. So we can do Los Angeles, Great Dane, Adoption, or Rescue. Um, the five years or older is a little more complicated because we would have to think, do our websites going that have Great Danes for adoption, are they going to list the, the age? And is that going to come up? Is Google going to crawl that, that part of the site? And so that's a little bit more complicated. We can type in you know, five years and just see, see what happens. Great Danes and Friends. Five years. So we don't need five best Great Danes. Not that interesting. But if we type in, if we do in quotes, five years old, let's see what happens. Adopted. So Great Dane, five years old. So this one is already adopted. Great Dane mix, about five years old. So, I mean, this might be worthwhile to go through. Adoptables, LA Animal Rescue. So, but it comes up with like great attitude. So we might actually just do in quotes also Great Dane. So as you can see, I'm honing my, I'm looking at the results and go, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. It's coming up with this, and this is not what I want. So then I'm adapting the search. So this is five, five years old, but the person said five years or older. So five years old may not be a good thing. That, that really limits us. But yeah, I mean, going through the search, it's possible that there is six week old, oh, this is too young. 
Shepherd mix, 4.5. Yeah, these are too young. Five years old, this is somebody else. So yeah, I mean, it might be a good idea. This is a Mastiff. Great day, Great Dane. So yeah, there's a different rescues here. So it might be a while, worthwhile to go through, but you can see my search. I, I search by location. If that's if that's important, then Los Angeles, then it would limit to that. Great Dane, I put in quotes because there's a lot of descriptions of dogs that say great, um, because all dogs are great. Um, so I wanted to put Great Dane to make sure that it's specifically that breed. Um, adoption or rescue, so under either adoption or rescue. Um, and then what we could also do here is it, what might be a good idea is to use uh, the range. So like, let's say, let's do this year because dogs get adopted pretty pretty quickly, ideally. Um, so might do that, so see some, a dog was available like right now, not like a year ago, because the website might stay up. So this, yeah, this would be, it would be worthwhile to kind of skim through this search and go through, there's only three pages here. So it's pretty quick to skim. So because we've, we've done so much honing here. I mean, it only gave us three pages. All right. And then someone's asking, um, is there a reason why you put Los Angeles first instead of Great Dane or that was just. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. I, I don't think that, I don't think that it's going to change the results all that much. Yeah, it's still three results. Yeah, it, it that for that it doesn't really make a difference because I don't think that Google prioritizes necessarily the first words, and if especially if they're so different. So Los Angeles and Great Dane are two totally different things, so it wouldn't affect the search. Now, if I type in Great Dane Collie, um, and then switch, that might affect the search because those are those two things are, would be competing within what Google is trying to retrieve for us. And I think you already answered this before, um, just the difference of DuckDuckGo versus Google, the, the privacy. Uh, yeah, the Google, uh, DuckDuckGo is more privacy oriented. So they don't track what you search for. You don't log into DuckDuckGo. Um, you, the search doesn't localize. So if, let's say if I type in go DuckDuckGo, I mean, let's give this a shot. I'm gonna type in pet shop like I did. Cause I, when I type in pet shop on Google, it brought me back pet shops that were in Glendale. If I type in pet shop and DuckDuckGo, let's see what happens. See, pet shop boys, it brought me back a knowledge, they have knowledge panels too. And the knowledge panel says pet shop boys, which is of course not a pet shop at all. So this is kind of the interesting things about search. Um, pet shop in Whitehall, Pennsylvania. So here, find results closer to so it could use. So it used. So here, it gave me results in downtown LA because it probably used my IP address, which is a, an address for my computer, um, to know that that I accessed the web using from this general vicinity. But obviously, it doesn't know where I am exactly. Like it doesn't go to Glendale. It gave me just Los Angeles. But so this that's the difference. That it doesn't it doesn't really track where you are. So it doesn't it can't give you locally. So I'd have to type in pet shops, Glendale, California, because otherwise you're bringing Glendale, Arizona. And so here we got started, getting pet, we get started getting these right here. And so it's giving better results here. But see, you have to, you have to tell Dr. Go this, otherwise it doesn't, it wouldn't know. All right, so that's, that's one difference. So if you're concerned with privacy, DuckDuckGo is good. And it's, it's interesting. It gives you a different perspective on search because you, you realize how much Google knows about you when you start searching DuckDuckGo. All right, next question. <clears throat> Does Google list number of results anymore? They sure do. Yeah. Um, we just came back. So let's go to, I, I don't know if it does on this one, but we just saw it a second ago. I just saw it a second ago on a different one. So here they're they're probably about between thirty and forty, but um, let's type in hockey playing dogs. I don't know why I'm typing this in. I just think random stuff. Uh, let's get rid of this duration anytime. Yep, thirty-one million results over there about hockey playing dogs. This is the internet, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? So now I don't see, I don't know if you um, are, would like some more questions or if we have time for more questions, but these are more kind of, some of them touch on Google search, some of them just um, touch on searches in general. 
Um, but looks like those are all of the Google specific search questions that we had, but we definitely have more. Um, but we are at 1237. So I don't know if we have time for any more. I could do like one or two more. Okay. Um, are there better search engines for finding people or looking for orbits? Wait, say that again. Are there better search engines for finding people or looking for orbits? Um, I'm not sure if they mean like if you're trying to look for someone um, and orbits. I'm I'm not sure about that part. But like planetary you know, orbits? I, I think that's what it could mean. Um, uh, but yeah, like if you know of any that are kind of specific. For, for searching for people? Yeah. Uh, I usually start or with. Obituaries. Oh, obituaries. Oh, obits. Obits. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you for clarifying. Uh, so for obituaries, I don't know offhand. Um, I usually, I, I would start with typing the person's name and obituary. Um, if you know approximately when they died, um, you could do, you could do a, use the tools and do a, a time, you know, when, when it came out. If that, if the newspaper, their obituary is, is online, especially if it's a local paper, um, that would probably come up. Um, for obituaries, I don't know if there's a specific, I don't know of a specific site, there might be one. Um, if, if I was searching for an obituary, probably the thing that I would, and I knew where that person died um, and when, um, then I what I would probably do is try to get access to the local paper or call the local library and see if they have access to the local paper that goes, if it's way back, then definitely I would do that because then they could look at it in a microfilm or they, they may have back issues and then they could find it for me. Um, online, um, it varies because there are a great many newspapers that aren't online. Now we do have databases that have old newspapers, um, and by old I mean anything from 1970. You know what 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 is old these days is kind of it, it varies with the, online. You know something that's 10 years old might not be online, um, where something that's 100 years old is maybe in some place more likely to be online. But so that's it, kind of a complicated question because it really depends on when they died, where, you know, there's, then that, that would shape how I would search, whether I would even search for it online. Okay. Um, any tips on how to try to stay on top of the research without using SEO companies? Stay on top of the? Top of the research without using SEO companies. Stay on top of the research? Stay, yeah. um, maybe stay on top of the results? Uh, if, if you're I'm, I'm, here, Margarita, please clarify with us. Um, uh, there is, I mean, you could do the, the things that the SEO companies do, you could do them yourself. I mean, there isn't, there's not, the SEO companies don't own the monopoly on search tips on, you know, on, on trying to understand the Google algorithm. So there are quite a lot of books about SEO. Um, try to get the ones that are more recent because like I said, these things change all the time. But yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing about SEO that's, that's kind of a, a mystery that's only available to those people. Okay. And uh, maybe this is a good question to end on. Old school, can you recommend the best current books on searching? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I can't because I haven't, I haven't done a search. I haven't looked at a lot of books on searching. Um, I, the book, a book, an old book I really like about searching is Ambient Findability. Um, but that's a pretty old, that's not a new book. I think, it, I think it's a really interesting book on searching. So uh, Peter, uh, Peter Morville's book is sort of almost a classic on search. Um, but I don't know if that, this is a kind of book that would help you search today. I mean, I don't know if it, it would help you with like with the kind of stuff we're talking about today, but I, I enjoyed this book. Um, there's a lot of books on searching. So I don't think I would be comfortable just get off the top of my head giving giving other recommendations. I would say that if you're not, if you're pretty new um, to search or if you're interested in kind of going just beyond what I talked about today, then almost any book on Google search would give you, especially, you know, a 300 page book would give you a lot more than I have during, I don't know, the last hour and 40 minutes. All right, so um, looks like, I mean, there are more, but so we could go on forever and ever um, if we yeah. want to continue, so. Um, All right, I'm gonna say the, the show is yours to close us out. 
Thank you so much, Oleg. Uh, we all learned so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. And we hope to see you at next week's event. Bye, take care. See you then.